So Ariel's making some maple bacon donuts and I'm cooking up the bacon for her. Okay, so they're just little donut balls we're making. I'm ready to fry these up. And so we're gonna let these cook for a few minutes and then pull them out. If you guys are interested in this full recipe, I will link our blog with the all the ingredients and the instructions and all that if you're interested in making it. All right, so we picked up some more free stuff yesterday. We got three of these awesome big windows. No cracks, anything. All the hinges work on them. All right, we also got a heavy-duty filing cabinet that was used in like an old school, I think he said. So this is lockable and it's super heavy. And then we got two big desks, and the desks we're going to put inside the shed and use them as shelves to get our stuff up off the ground. So as you know, Eric and I do not have a bathroom, like an official bathroom. We just have an outhouse, and we just take showers mainly outside, and we heat up the water on the wood stove for now. But we'd like to have like a shower room, and maybe in the future like a composting toilet. So those windows, because they're in such good condition, we will probably use them in the shower room, which is pretty cool. So this is what the shed or the Connex cube looks like now. You can tell our organizational skills are not that great. We want to utilize more of the height of the cube since it's nine feet and stack items up. Ideally, we'd want to build like nice shelves, but we're just trying to do things free or low cost for now. Got more of our stuff up, up um, a little bit higher, and we have more room for more stuff. I mean, we can't keep getting free stuff. There's a bunch of stuff online that we could go get, but at some point we're gonna run out of space to put it, so we have to do stuff with it first. All our mason jars. So this is the snow blower we got, and like I said in a previous video, we got it for. I said we got it for free. When we bought the snow machine, the guy threw this in with it. And today, I got to put a new uh, shear bolt on there, which goes right here and connects this auger. And what that does is if this hits something like a rock, it'll just break that bolt instead of snapping that shaft right there. So I'm going to find a bolt that'll fit through here and get this thing so it's ready to go because we're supposed to have some snow pretty soon. Okay, so right there. It's a new shear bolt we put in, so now this, this thing's ready to go. All right, now our trailer lights have been acting kind of funny. So I got my light tester, a couple tools. We're gonna see if we can figure out what's going on with them. Okay, thinking I found the problem already. When I pulled that plug apart, you can see that blue corrosion on there, and it actually broke off in that other plug. So. I don't have another plug. I'm gonna try to just wire those wires directly into those top ones with some butt connectors and see if that works. Okay, so I got the trailer lights working. Uh, I kind of had to jimmy rig them a little bit. I don't know what was going on with them, but the plug that goes into this adapter so I can run a trailer with trailer brakes 
it was all corroded and it was falling apart, so I figured that was a problem. And I rewired it. Turns out that wasn't a problem. And what was happening was the taillights weren't working. And when I would turn on the flashers or the blinkers, all the lights on the trailer would blink. The running lights, uh, the brake lights, everything. So something was wrong. So long story short, I had to go into the taillight and just rewire the um, taillight from that plug directly into the taillight. So trailer lights are working. We're happy. We can go out when it's dark and not kill anybody. So we're taking the dogs out to exercise this morning and we've been seeing a lot of tracks of snowshoe hares. So we're bringing the 17 HMR with us and we're going to go see if we can find any. So Bandit's walking in a pair of moose tracks right now. We've had a lot of them around here lately. The moose are like super active right now. And I think it's mainly a mom and a baby walking around here. Bumbo. So we started to find rabbit prints. And this is, you can see bunny poop. And this is the back legs or feet. And that's their little front paws. So these are the willow trees or bushes that the rabbits and the moose eat. And you can tell they've been like nibbled. So I found some high bush cranberries and these I know you can eat because we've eaten them before. And they're not actually a cranberry. That's what they call them, a high bush cranberry. They're actually really good. And they taste just like a cranberry. So these are snowshoe hair tracks. And then I'm standing in moose tracks. And Bandit's got the scent of something, so we're gonna kinda just be following him. So Eric and Bandit, and Bo, are up there a little bit ahead. And Bandit is a Catahoula, he's a Catahoula leopard dog. They're from the south. And he is, he's meant for pig hunting. That's what his parents did. Obviously that's not what he does, but Believe it or not, he's actually a wonderful bird dog. They are more like herding type dogs than they are hound dogs. So he can smell really good, but he can only do like fresh scents. So if he smells something, that means it's been there relatively recently. We've taken both of them pheasant hunting. Bandit was wonderful. We've taken them both waterfowl hunting and neither of them were that good or that interested in the ducks. So I'm kind of excited to try rabbit hunting with them. So Bandit has one marbled eye. It's a little bit blue, you can kind of tell. He doesn't want to look at us right now. Um, his mom had two blue eyes. All right, since we're not really finding any rabbits, we figured it'd be a good time to introduce you to the dogs. This is Bo, and both him and Bandit are about nine years old. Bo might be a little bit older. And we got Bo when he was probably about one and a half years old. And when we got him, we got him from a pound. They said that they thought he was an Akita mixed with a greater Swiss mountain dog. He's a really, he's a really good dog. He's not as high energy as Bandit, as you can tell. Okay, we've gotten a couple questions to kind of tell you what we got going on here with our um, GPS system and our dog training collars. And this is a Garmin. It's a Alpha 100 is the model. And we just have our two dog collars. We originally bought this in Oregon for keeping track of Bandit because when we're out in the woods he likes to kind of take off and this will track us and it's actually saved us from losing him a couple times. Um, and what this does is it's a training collar and a GPS so like I said it'll track the dogs and us and it'll also do a tone and you can also uh, shock. Okay, all in all since we've had these collars we have had absolutely no complaints on them. They're really expensive. I believe they're about $1,200 for uh, the unit itself and having to buy the extra collar for our two dogs. The battery life on this seems to last a really long time. The collars themselves, they are waterproof and you can run, I believe it's, it's either 15 or 25, you can run that many collars on just this one unit and track all your dogs. So this will track us and tell how far we've hiked and it'll show how far the dogs have hiked and I'll kind of zoom in on the screen on what we're working with. So the, this has a ton of features, and for us, what we use the most is tracking the GPS of the dogs and us, and we also use the tone feature, which doesn't shock them on Bandit, because he responds to come back when he hears that tone. Overall, we highly recommend these, and we've had ours for about four years, and we really enjoy them. Try to take Ariel out. Just decided I'd go for a swim. This is what you get. 
<laughs> it's a little deep out here, guys. So I bought this really awesome book. It showed a plant that looks a lot like this. And I think that's the one that's not edible but I'm gonna keep my eye out for the one that is edible. So I am showing you guys lots of droppings today, which I know may not be super fascinating. I'm not sure what that is. If anyone knows, try and give us a guess. So we came to this little area of two tracks here. And if you can see them, the first one on the left is moose. And then there's one on the right. I can't really tell what it is. It's not our dogs. So now we've gotten back, I checked our GPS and Bandit actually ran twice as far as us and Bo did. We walked 0.75 of a mile and so did Bo and Bandit ran one and a half miles. So we didn't get any rabbits, but we did see lots of signs of them and we marked a few locations where we saw a lot of activity. So we're gonna go check those spots out again in the future. So we bought this book, it was only like, I think it was under $10. It's a really cool little guide. So this is Labrador tea. In here it says that they have a felty undercoating, which is what I noticed. It says it's also known for its distinct fragrance, and I mean it is really strong, um, really nice smelling plant. It also tells you ones that can be look-alikes, and it says there's something known as a toxic bog, rosemary. This is clearly not that. We've identified it, so it's kind of cool. We make some tea out of this little shrub. So the plant I pointed out was not horse's tail. I think I called it horse's tail. Um, and I don't know if it was mare's tail, but that's what I was thinking it was. I'm gonna look up online and see what it is because it didn't have a green, um, it had a green stem, it didn't have this brown stem. So this is what I've been looking for since we live in an area that has bogs. 